And in this month, we all want to pray for all the fathers, and I want us all of us also to, as we join in prayer, to pray for our fathers, whether they are alive or they are already gone, whether we know them or we don't know them. So we want to offer this month to pray for them, because they've got a role that they play that is important, or a role that they played in our lives, or even if they didn't, there is that role of a father. So we want to pray, asking God to bless each and every one of them. And there's also something that we learn from St. Joseph, him as a person, not as a father, but as a person, there is a Lord that we learn. And in this month, this is what we want to say, say, Lord, open our ears so that we can hear what you have taught us through the life of St. Joseph. So in order for us to offer this mass weekly, we call to mind our sins and ask for God's pardon and mercy. I confess to you, Almighty God, Almighty God and to you, and to you my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my, in my thoughts, thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my previous fault. Therefore, I ask the blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, and my brothers and sisters, to pray for, pray me, for me to the Lord, to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, mercy. have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us stand for the glory. Oh, 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 oh,
intercession, your church may constantly watch over the unfolding of the mysteries of human salvation, whose beginnings you entrusted to his faithful care. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Our first reading is from the second book of Samuel. In those days, the word of, of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David. Thus says the Lord, when your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring after you who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my, for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. And your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to us. The response to the responsorial psalm is, his descendants shall continue forever. His descendants shall continue forever. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. Through all ages, my mouth will proclaim your fidelity. I have declared your mercy in, I have declared your mercy is established forever. Your fidelity stands firm as the heavens. Response. Yes. His descendants shall continue forever. With my chosen one, I have made a covenant. I have sworn to David my servants, 
I will establish your descendants forever and set up your throne from all ages. Response. He will call out to me, you are my father, my God, the rock of my salvation. I will keep my faithful love for his, for him always. With him, my covenant shall last. Response. His descendants shall continue forever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, the promise to Abraham and his descendants that they should inherit the world did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. That is why all depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be granted to all his descendants, not only to the adherences of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations in the presence of God in whom he believed, who gives life, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that did not exist. In hope he believed against hope that he should become the father of many nations. As he had been told, so shall your descendants be. That is why his faith was recognized to him as righteousness, the word of the Lord. Amen. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, O Lord, ever singing your praise. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. We read Matthew chapter 1, verses 16 to 24. Jacob was the father of Joseph and the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who is called Christ. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child of the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to send her away quietly. But as he considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph walked from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm also going to use I'm speaking to you as if I'm speaking to grade five and six. So I hope when I come here, it will be more visible. So today, as I have said, we are celebrating the day of uh, Saint Joseph. And uh, there are quite a number of Josephs in the Bible, isn't it? We've got Joseph of Armadia. We've got Joseph, the dreamer in the Old Testament. We've got Joseph, who there are quite a number of Josephs in the, in the Bible. But today, the Joseph that we're talking about is the, the Joseph that we have heard of in a, a gospel reading. Joseph, who was the husband of men. And Joseph, 
who was also the foster father of, of Jesus Christ. This is the Joseph that we are talking about. So even you can even brainstorm and think of some other Josephs, but we are talking about the Joseph who is the husband of Mary. And there is a lot that we can learn from Joseph, the husband of Mary. There's a lot that we can also deduce from the life of Joseph as the husband of Mary. And this is what we are going to talk about. So probably before we can talk about Joseph, I just want to mention a few things in reference to the readings of today. The first reading, we hear about uh, David wanting to build a house for the Lord. And then Nathan at first said, it's okay, go ahead. But later on, God appeared to Nathan in, in a dream. And when he appeared to him, he said, he is not the one who is going to build this temple or this house for me. He, one of his offsprings is going to do that. And then we are going to see that being fulfilled. So the most important thing about the first reading is to say, God does not begin something that he does not bring to completion. Believe me or not, when God starts something, he makes sure that it comes to completion. And this is one thing that we are learning from the first reading. The second reading is talking about uh, the aspect of Abraham being a man of faith. And we talk about him as the father of faith. We talk about him as the father who listened to, to the message that came from God and fulfilled it. So this is Abraham. And quite a number of times, we see also the definition of God in the way Abraham related to, to God. Quite a number of times, we speak of God as the promise keeper. And in the life of Abraham, did he keep the promise? Did he? Yes, God kept all his promises. You remember one of the promises, I'm going to make you a father of many nations. And was that promise fulfilled? Yes, it was fulfilled. So God on his part, he fulfills, he keeps all his promises. What about on our part? The second reading is teaching us, on our part, we need to be a people of faith. So to all of us as a people of God, if we want God to keep his promises, in our lives, we also need to be a people of faith. Now let us come back to Joseph. Joseph, the name Joseph has got a, quite a number of letters. If I'm not mistaken, there should be six sister, isn't it? Six letters. The first one is a J. The second one is a O, followed by an S, an E, a P, and last the, the H. So I'm going to use the letters from the name Joseph, but I'm not going to use all of them. I've just picked three to learn something from, from Joseph. So the first one, I think you can see. The first one is an O. Joseph was a man of obedience. Is this really true? And if he was a man of obedience, what is it that it teaches us? What is it that it brings in our lives? as a people of God, you and me, we are also called to be obedient to the Lord. So let us look at what uh, Joseph did in his life. The first time he's having Mary as the wife, for the first time, then the wife is found to be pregnant. And who is the owner, who is responsible of this pregnancy? The Holy Spirit. And Joseph came to, to know about it. And what is it that he's going to do? He's saying, I'm going to divorce him, but I'm going to do it privately. And then the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. And what did the angel say? Do not even think of sending her away. That pregnancy belongs to the Holy Spirit. And the following day, what did Joseph do? He never even did, went on to do what he was thinking of doing. A man of obedience. And as it comes to all of us, as children of God, we also need to ask ourselves, in terms of obedience, where do we stand? Do we obey the voice of God? By the way, when God was speaking to Joseph, we shall see most of the times he was using dreams. God can speak to us in different ways. 
He can use dreams. He can use people around us. He can use even the weight of God. He can use even situations out there. COVID-19 can be God speaking to us. God uses situations to speak to each and every one of us. So we are saying in each and every way that God is going to speak to us, do we as a people of God become a people who are obedient? When God is going to speak through your parents, are you going to be obedient to that? When God is speaking even through the word of God, are we going to be obedient? Let us learn from Joseph. This was not the only time he dreamt and the following day he acted. You remember when they were in Bethlehem, when the angel also appeared in a dream. Joseph, wake up, take the mother and the child and run to flee to Egypt. And immediately Joseph did the same. And the question that comes to mind is to say, why would God speak to, to Joseph instead of speaking to Mary since she was the one who was carrying the pregnancy? Why? Because God is saying you are the father. You are responsible. And probably to some of the fathers who are here, this is your duty to be responsible, to lead the family. And Joseph did that in obedience. And we want to pray for that. Sometimes, even when you come to school, we choose not to, to obey. Sometimes, even when you come to, to work, we choose not to obey. But we want to pray today that God can also give us that virtue of obedience. Joseph was a man of obedience. He obeyed all the commandments of God. When they were in Egypt, God said, now you can go back. He didn't even question to say, but why are you tossing us around? He's just a man of obedience. So you shall see this virtue of obedience is needed in our lives. The Bible says, obedience is better than sacrifice. Quite a number of times I want to do this, obey the Lord. Quite a number of people who failed to obey the Lord and the end result was not good. So for you and me as a people of God, let us be a people of obedience. What follows an O, by the way? An S. What do you think this S is standing for? Selfless servant of God. Saint of God. So Joseph was that selfless man of God. That selfless servant of God. And what did he do to show that he was selfless? If you are to look at it, in everything that he was doing, he never considered himself first. He considered Mary and the child Jesus first. And in short, about us, I, will, I just want to say, let's, let's put others first. Just yesterday, we were talking about Moses. When he was up the mountain, the Lord is saying, I want to destroy these people, and I'm going to make you, to make a nation from you. When he entered into prayer, he never thought of himself he thought of the people of God. He was selfless. And this is the same thing that we learn from Joseph. And we also need to do the same. When we are at home, do you think that my brother should get this thing first? Do you consider your sister first? And this is what Joseph is teaching us. In his obedience, he is also a man who is selfless. In his Waking, he's a man who does not think of himself first. He thinks of others first. And as we pray today, this is a way that we need to pray for. Before you can find something for yourself, consider others first. And this we learn from this man of God. I'm now rushing to the last one. And E, what do you think it means? He was a very good example, exemplar. Looking at what Joseph did, if I'm not mistaken, the whole Bible, you never ever hear any statement that was uttered by Joseph, but he made an impact in the lives of mankind. And what does that mean? Even without speaking, you can still make an impact. Even without words coming out from 
from your mouth, you can leave a mark behind. And what does that mean? Being a good example. And as we are all gathering today as a people of God, are you a good example? To whom are you a good example? Just think of yourself. When people see me out there, am I a good example? To all the teachers who are here, when your children are seeing you, do they see a good example? To all the parents who are here, and also to the children at home, are you a good example to others? When people look at you, do they have anything good to emulate? So Joseph was a very good man, a, an exemplary figure. We want to pray to God today that God can guide each and every one of us. Before we can speak, let our actions speak on our behalf. And if our actions are going to speak on our behalf, what is it? What message are we going to pass to people? So these three things that I've chosen today, let us be a people who are obedient to the Lord. Number two, let us be a people who are selfless. When we do everything and anything, we consider others first. And lastly, being very good examples to the people whom we encounter. And this is what we need to pray for. You remember when you talk about God fulfilling his promises, we said we also need faith that comes from us. In order for Joseph to, to fulfill all these things, it was because he had faith in God. Do you have faith in the God that you believe in, in the God that we gather for today? Joseph was chosen as an instrument to be the foster father of Jesus Christ, and he made an impact. You and me, we have been chosen for different reasons, for different purposes, and we need to check what type of an impact, the gravity of it, the impact that we make to the people who surround us. May God help us in, in this journey of life. Remember, we are called to make a difference. Let us now stand to profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. So we continue with our offertory team. Thank you. 
Pray now that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We pray, O Lord, that just as St. Joseph saved with loving care, your only begotten Son, born of the Virgin Mary, so we may be worthy to minister with a pure heart at your altar. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and ever to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father. Almighty and eternal God, on the solemnity of St. Joseph, to give you fitting praise, to glorify you, and to bless you. For this just man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God, and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household, to watch like a father over your only begotten son, who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty. Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exhortation. May our voices, we pray, join with us in humble praise as we are praying. Holy, 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 holy Lord, 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 heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and you are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift to pray by sending down your Holy Spirit upon them like the joyful, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to all his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to all his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, and bring this we proclaim the death of our Lord until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the blood and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your chase spread throughout the world and bring you to the fullness of charity together, Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, so we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Um, that the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, the Lord be thy name, thy kingdom come. And I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Do not let us go into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, we say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And we give each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you will take our the sins of the Lord and mercy on us. Lamb of God, you will take our the sins of the Lord and mercy on us. Now, God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold, the Lamb of God, behold, this is Jesus Christ who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord. I will not wait for you to enter under the Lord. But only say your words, and my soul shall keep you. May the body and the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen.
let us pray. Defend with unfailing protection, O oh, oh Lord, we pray. The family you have nourished with food from this altar, as they rejoice at the solemnity of St. Joseph, and graciously keep safe your gifts among them. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and be with you now and forever. Amen. We go in the peace of Christ. Our mass has come to an end. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed day, everyone. Thank you, sir.